Welcome back to Council Customs. So about two months ago, this truck came up for sale on Marketplace for too cheap to pass up. So here it is, got it back to the shop. It's been sitting here and we're in between switching projects real quick. And I've got a vision for how I want this truck to look. And it really can be a big time budget friendly truck with a really cool outcome. But the thing is to get it there, I'm gonna have to tear this truck all the way down and I'm gonna take it all the way down to the bare frame. I'm gonna get everything blasted and I'll fill you in a little bit on what my ideas are. So I do know this truck's not perfect. There's a little bit of a whammy right here, a little doink in the front. Down here in the bottom, it's got, it's rolled in right here, but for the most part, a lot of this stuff can be massaged out and worked out. There's a crease in the front of the door. I can I can beat that back out. But I need to get my eyes on everything to really see what the truck looks like. And you can see the guy before me already went ahead and started stripping all the paint off. This was bare metal. It's been sitting outside for not very long at all. But this right here will really give you an idea of what I think I want to do with this truck. So you hear a faux Tina fake patina, all that stuff. Well, it's not gonna be fake, it's gonna be real. But I wanna take this truck all the way down to bare metal and I wanna make it rust. And I want the whole truck to be rust. I'm gonna do my little tips and tricks on things that I've learned over time on how to make your rust a little bit more predominant and less predominant in certain areas because I want it to have like a darker hood and you know, have just, these little key features and stuff like that on it that you would see more natural over a long period of time, but I'm gonna try to get it done in a short period of time. So yes, this video is gonna be disassembly of the truck and really getting to know it and figuring out what all we are missing, what all is here, um, how much of this project is gonna be savable and how much of it isn't. What of it do we need to order? What of it do I need to search for? What of it do I need to find a, another truck around locally for parts and pieces. The truck did need a tailgate and I've already sourced one of those. And as you can see, this one's got some pretty big rust holes and stuff in it, but I don't care because I need a tailgate. It ain't gotta be perfect. That's the thing about these patina style trucks and stuff. The, it doesn't need to be perfect. I don't have to have a completely rust free truck. I just need it to be all there and together enough. The cab needs to be sealed and no giant holes in the bed floor. Now, yes, we do have holes in the bed floor on this truck, which you've already got an idea of what we're gonna do. But the truck was so cheap, like I said, that it's okay. So, you now we have a tailgate. I do have all of the hardware and everything. The guy I got the tailgate from is actually a guy I work with. He searched for a tailgate that was more together and complete for his truck. But for me, this is perfect for what we're doing. It's exactly what I wanted. This was actually already sandblasted and I set this tailgate outside for it to get some rust. And if you notice it does the, the running down, I had it sitting upright outside for it to go ahead and start doing this but this right here is how i want the entire truck to look is how this looks now that's a key feature because later on we're going to need this color for the rest of the process now as for the back back here i do have another bumper that's also not extremely straight either but i have one of each style now i have the wraparound and one that's not a wraparound both of them are aftermarket steel bumpers like this. I'm gonna play with both of them and see what I can do about straightening them out and which one's saveable, but we'll do that at a later date. That's whenever we're on reassembly. As of right now, I'm still searching for a front bumper. I actually had a perfect lead on a front bumper that was somewhat local to us. And unfortunately, uh, on our way, we were gonna go the next day and go pick up the bumper and I already lined it out with the guy and everything and uh, it was really just gonna be a, give me what you think it's worth kind of deal. And 
I had it all lined up. This truck had been sitting out in the woods and they were finally ready to clear the property out. They were just gonna get what they could get for any parts and pieces for the trucks. And we had just picked this truck up, but unfortunately the starter went out in the Jetta and I missed my opportunity. So it sucks, but bumpers are out there. We'll find another one. We got time, not all the time in the world, but we got time. So I think what I'm gonna start on first here is taking this foot off. If y'all remember whenever I first brought this truck home, it didn't have a clip on it and the hood wasn't on it, but I did put it back on the truck for it to sit outside. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this back off. Should be very loosely. I know the front's not, the front's not bolted on. I think I just have, yeah, I just got bolts in the firewall. I think there's one in each side, that's it. There's just one bolt in each side holding the firewall or holding the, uh, the whole front clip on. And I got four bolts sitting in the hood so I can pull the hood off. So let me go ahead and pull those. Let me go ahead and pull the front clip and we'll start working our way further back from there. Now, I don't know how y'all are whenever you're disassembling a vehicle but I am big on the bagging and tagging. What bolts I can save and all that stuff, that is later. Take them, drop in my hood bolt bag. Now, let me set them somewhere, I'll lose them forever. Now, like I said, the front clip here is just held in with two bolts. But I remember how much we fought it, putting it together. I have no fear just taking those out of this thing just falling off. All right, so the front clip's off. Now I can go ahead if I want to, before we go any further, just start snipping and cutting a lot of this stuff out of here because we ain't gonna use none of it. I'm gonna do a different brake pedal setup. Instead of the old death pot, I'm gonna put something a little bit better in here to incorporate disc brakes and none of this wiring is gonna get reused. So I can go ahead and start just pulling some of this stuff out of here real quick. Now we do know we're gonna take the cab off this frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the uh, rag joint right here as well. All right, so now we're gonna go inside the truck, take out some of this stuff. Door panel piece goes right here on the driver's side. We got a belt, looks to be in good shape. Yeah, like pretty good shape. That can go on the shelf for belts. Same with this one and that's a lawnmower belt. Shelf with belts. Wiper blade. We got two already, so we got a spare. So don't have to be don't have to be as gentle now. I wanna say this is either small block Ford or FE. I'm not sure, so I'll, I'll do some research to see if I can figure it out by looking at it somehow. And I'm gonna keep it just so that way I have a uh, oil pump priming tool. So we got this 80s model F100 badge. Another good belt. Somebody's gonna be upset, they ain't got no belt. A coil that I bet you probably works better than a coil you buy at the store. And that one probably works even better than one you buy at the store. Inner door channel, felt channel, or something. 
I don't know if this goes to this truck, so we're gonna hang on to it for now. I do not plan on changing this seat. And somebody has already put the right holes in here. It, it has plenty, it has, a, has about that much space right there of allowance of the seat to go back. I'm a big old boy and I can, I can also cut these seat braces and lower this seat a lot, which would help a lot. But as for the shape and everything, it's got plenty of foam and everything in it and it's really comfortable. So I'm gonna leave the seat itself alone. I'm probably gonna clean the crap out of it before we go any further on installation and headrests. They gotta go and I'll decide if we keep this steering wheel or not. If I can get my hands on a horn button, that makes a big difference. As for inside of here, the dashboard's already been hacked up for a radio. So we'll just, we'll open it up the rest of the way and put just a basic little radio in it because everybody wants to listen to some tunes. Um, gauges, I'm not sure exactly what we'll do for gauges. Probably wind up doing some kind of cheap gauge cluster uh, with a nice little set of dolphin gauges or something in here. Like I said, we're going for budget. I had the Dakota digital gauge cluster that went in the circle gauges right here on my old 66, but that project got out of hand. Before you knew it, that truck was way overbuilt, way more than I ever thought it would be. It was cool. There was no doubt that that truck was cool, but man, it just, it ended up being a way more truck than what I originally wanted. So that's not gonna happen this go around. I really have some good ideas. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk y'all's ear off on saying that we're gonna do a budget, but man, I, I really do have some good, stuff to make one really nice budget truck if we wanted to we could go as far as put the logos on the doors and all that stuff have a shop truck i could throw ac in it and daily drive it if i wanted i'm not sure i'm not sure what we're going to do with it yet i might just build it and flip it and sell it i mean it is unsure at the moment but i'll tell you this I'm gonna try to keep it as low budget as possible. A nice, good, solid driver truck that is not gonna, I, I don't care if I offend everybody, I don't care. Hot rodding is about doing what you want to do. It's about building the car you want. All these people that are purists, oh, you gotta put a Ford in a Ford, you gotta put a Chevy in a Chevy, you gotta put a Mopar in a Mopar. Who cares? Look at all the top shops that are building cars out there. I'm not comparing myself in any way to Kendig or Roadster Shop, but they don't, they're not, they're not building cars and saying, well, we're putting a Ford and a Ford. Now, yeah, they put a coyote in a lot of stuff that's a Ford. I don't got coyote muddy. I I, I'm a, I work every day. I got a family of my own. I got plenty of other cars up here to play with. I don't have coyote money. So LS. At, you know, if you look at Roadster Shop or Martin Brothers or uh, I'm just, those are Martin Brothers and uh, Ken Dig, those are two TV guys, but yes, they build good quality stuff. But I'm talking about shops off the beaten path Miranda Built, Goolsby, all those guys that are building all these high end pro cars, they're taking an LS motor and making it look like anything they want. They look at it as a modern push rod engine. They're not looking at it as LS power or high performance power, or not um, LS power or Chevrolet power and putting a Chevy in a Ford. They're looking at it as modern day push rod V8 engine. Turnkey reliability. That's all it is. And that's what a small block Chevy is. Yeah, 302s are cool. I had a 289 in my old 66. They're cool engines. They are, they're great engines. If you can find them, and if you can find them for a decent price. Once you start digging into them, they're extremely expensive. Small block Chevys aren't as expensive to build, so they're easier for the consumer to play with. 
especially guys that are doing more than one car. If you're doing one car for the rest of your life, then I understand taking your time and building a 429 Cobra Jet motor with all that stuff on it. I get it. But if you're doing it, if you're planning on building more than one car, don't blow your wad on one car unless that is like your one flagship car. Now, like I said, this is going to be a quick, down and dirty, cheap, throw it together truck. I'm not going to blow my wad on on a trying to make it pure. So a Ford and a Ford and all that stuff. I'm going to put a reliable engine in it that I can trust. So whenever I put something in here, I'm not sure what it'll be yet, but it's going to be something that's turnkey and reliable and easy to slap in. So now that I talked to you off about that, let's move on from the interior. A while back from a swap meet, I picked up a set of these old mirrors. And I think they're going to work perfect on this truck. They're fully adjustable, so I'll have to adjust them. But I think these are going to work out perfect for this truck. It ain't got no mirrors on it right now, so it's going to need something. So I think just putting a set of these old Western style mirrors on it are going to look cool. Especially when we do everything else to it. Next step we got here, we're going to go ahead, get the truck jacked up, get all the tires off of it. And I want to get this truck on level ground. You'll see why we're going to do that here shortly, but I want to get the truck jacked up, get it on level ground, get all four tires off of it. And I need to measure out that rear end, see what the width is. I got ideas, got ideas. having helpers and teaching them things. It's my favorite. Yeah. Bring it with you. We're going to go measure another one. Okay. Hold it. 60 and a half. 59 and a half. That's a big difference. All right. So in case y'all couldn't tell just now, whenever I'm obviously measuring on an axle, my plan includes pulling this nine inch out. That's probably going to get a lot of y'all and an uproar. Why would you pull a nine inch if you're not gonna just immediately replace it with a uh, four to eight eight with disc brakes and all that? Why would you pull it and just put another rear end in it that's got drum brakes and all that? Well, it's probably not as good. So there's number one, it's free. So is this one, but if you've already pieced together this puzzle, I'm about to cut off the front end of this truck. We're gonna put a Camaro clip on it. I gotta go dig it out, but I'm gonna put that Chevrolet rear axle with that Camaro front clip. And then, see these wheels that look like they're boat anchors? Look how nasty and pitted they are and everything. Those were free as well. Now, you see those and how they look. I've got all four. And those, these ones right here used to look just like that. With a little bit of elbow grease. Whenever we did this half a truck. I cleaned up two of those wheels. And brought the shine back to them. Just sitting there polishing on it on the tire machine just running around it running around it polishing on it polishing on it and i was able to bring the shine back to them these are not mustang wheels because these are chevrolet bolt pattern these are actually american racing brand wheels that we got for free guy was gonna throw them away and he said i don't know if you'd be interested in them so we said yeah as you can see polished up and cleaned up they're a decent looking set of wheels for free that what, once I get Chevrolet front bolt pattern and everything on there, yes, I can find disc brake conversion or disc brake, yeah, disc brake, I guess, conversion for Camaro front uh, subframe that converts it to Ford bolt pattern or 
I have a rear axle that I could just make the rear axle fit the truck, which apparently it's going to be a hair narrower, which that's even better. Give me more space in there because I'm going to, I'm going to widen these tubs as well, just like I did on my old truck where I just took the tub and opened it up all the way to where the frame sits which I believe is, I think it's six more inches. That would be right there to the inside of that square. at six more inches stretched. And that's where the frame rail is. So that allows me six more inches of tire here in the back without adjusting the frame rail, literally just stretching the tubs while I have all this floor and everything cut out anyway. That's what we're looking at as a plan so far right now is we're gonna stretch the tubs. We're gonna put the, the Chevrolet rear axle and we're gonna put the Camaro front clip in the front. I've got the idea for the engine. I'm gonna to wait to tell y'all about that. And no, I'm not using that 390 over there either. The people that hate the fact that I'm putting a Camaro subframe on it are probably gonna hate the engine I'm gonna go with even more. It's not Ford, it's not Chevy, it's not Dodge, it's not even American, but I already own it. And if you've watched enough of my videos to piece that together, good on you i'm sure there's a better way to do this i'm sure everybody's going to tell me i'm incorrect but i'm not taking the cab off until after i get the front suspension at least tacked into place 100 percent so i'm going to use the edge of my doors i've already marked it on the other side i'm using the edge of my door and then level to give me a perfect 31 and three quarters. I'm gonna come over here on the door. I'm gonna grab the smallest marker I can find. 31. Three quarter inches. And that's to the center line. I used the smallest marker I could because apparently this one's dead. Now I have a line to measure from here and whenever I go to square everything up perfectly after this is cut off I got a ballpark to measure from I just need something my old truck had a uh, Crown Victoria front suspension and I don't know how many of y'all have done the Crown Victoria uh, front suspension swap not the full frame swap I'm talking just a subframe swap up here in the front Whenever you cut all these buckets off, you end up with three holes in a line. Middle hole is where this is at. One hole back, it pushes it real far back, and there's one hole forward. You have a dowel pin in the bottom of your front suspension, and you can figure out which one it sits in, and that's the one you can use to put the stuff together. Most guys use the very front hole as well as I did, and it moves your front suspension forward like an inch and a half, and it makes it look really good. The tire fits the wheel well a little bit better. So when I do this, I might go ahead and push this forward an inch and a half as well to get the tire to sit in the wheel well the way I want. But that's part of the reason I'm not disassembling that front clip right this moment. So that way I can go ahead and cut all of this off and then I can put my subframe in place and tighten it down with C-clamps uh, and then figure out exactly where I want it to sit. Well, I pulled the Camaro suspension out, but I don't know if y'all will see immediately all the things that I'm missing because I had hauled off some scrap and I let the stuff go. My lower control arms are missing. My steering box is missing my which i knew i needed brakes anyway but i don't even have the drum brakes anymore as mock-up <sighs> so all that hard work for me to throw it away right now it's fine it's fine it's fine so i'm gonna take this as a blessing in disguise and look at the positives in it and the reason why i say that is instead of us putting a whole new front suspension. And if right now, if I bought all the stuff, it'd be, a, it'd be about 
between tubular upper and lower control arms, disc brakes, all that stuff being eBay kit, um, a new steering box and all that, putting that rear end in the truck, or yeah, that rear end in the truck, not really putting any money in it. If I left this truck a long bed right now, I even have the factory drive shaft right here with the carrier bearing. So I think what we're gonna do, instead of putting all the time into lowering it, I think we're gonna make it an even more budget-friendly pickup. It's gonna stay twin I-beam. It's gonna stay factory height for right now. I know, I know it sucks. But we're gonna leave it factory height for right now. We're still gonna blow it apart. We're still gonna paint the frame and do all that stuff that we were planning on doing and doing the exterior the way that we're planning and all that stuff slamming the engine and transmission in here like i was already planning on and making this thing an even more budget friendly pickup because now we're not changing the suspension so the money that i would have spent in suspension it's all gone now now we're just down to everything else this this just changed in the for the positive i mean a lot of money just got saved and redirected in the project so now let's get this stripped down so that way I can get all the primer and Bondo and everything out of the truck. All right, so last night I really had a night to sit down, think on it, and really decide what we're gonna do here. With that being said, what my decision has been for now, I'm not changing any of the suspension. I'm not changing any of the, the brakes. I'm gonna put a booster mass cylinder on it instead of the original little death pot. We're gonna do that with all new brake lines running to everything and rebuild all of the brakes on the truck to get everything stopping as good as possible using full wheel drum. That being said, we'll see how it stops. We'll see how it runs. We'll see how it drives. And go from there, I might, I might just do drop beams and a spring kit because you can get a spring kit with, with shocks and all that stuff. Nostalgia said you can get a set of drop, drop eye beams and all that stuff. And I could put together my own really good looking low setup kit for around thousand dollars. The only bad part is doing that, keeping uh, twin eye beam. You're still looking at another like six hundred dollars or so to convert the front to disc brake. No, nothing set in stone because I I looked around a little bit this morning and I could still pick up a uh, Crown Vic front suspension, what I ran in my old truck. Now in my Crown Vic in my old truck, I changed the coils and did a bunch of other stuff, but I did drive it for a while on the factory struts and then I changed the truck over to coil overs and man it did so much better but the factory coils have been just fine if you're gonna just daily drive it no extras and none of that stuff now that truck i would set it up to do like more autocross and stuff this one is not going to be anything like that I, i'm not ready to let y'all know what the engine is yet you'll see it soon i'm still driving it right now there's another hint that's two hints now we have a set of wheels and tires in there that are five on five and a half or I have steel wheels and a buddy at work said that he has a rear set of tires, rear set of wheels that are made to fill up the back wheel well for five or five and a half. So I could buy those from him or I could get adapters to put these wheels on if I wanted to use these still. Now they're Chevrolet bolt pattern, but who cares? I could put these wheels on it. Yes, they're dirty, but they, they will clean up. I could put these on it and get a little bit more muscle truck, modern looking look out of it. I don't know. I'm gonna kick around some more ideas. We're gonna figure out exactly what we're planning on doing. We don't have anything set in stone. I need y'all's help. What do y'all want? Crown Vic front, leave the, leave the twin I-beam, lower the twin I-beam. Do we wanna put these wheels? Do we want to put steel wheels? Do we want to put those American racing or the, uh, hang on. So these are two wheel options we have. These are 
Rocket Racing Wheels, uh, staggered offset, or American Racing Wheels that look like Mustang wheels. That nasty one I was holding up here a minute ago, that's a twin. That's just what it looks like after you clean it up. And we can do that. I don't know, we got options. Because I can put those on here with a little bit bigger tire, make it look decent, be an okay driver. I also got these wheels for free. These ones weren't. Now these are direct bolt up for Ford, but I don't know. I need options. I need y'all to help me pick pick stuff here. This is y'all's time to shine. I need y'all's help. Let's get back to work. So because I'm an absolute crazy person, the truck is no longer disassembled. It is actually reassembled. And the reason being is I set the 390 in here just for weight in the front because I wanted to see. I put four wheels and tires that match all the way around the truck so that way I can get an idea of actual ride height of how this truck's going to sit. I don't want to do all this work and the truck sits way too high and I'm unhappy. So I need to figure out ride height and everything now. With a 390 sitting in here and another hint towards engine, it's going to be much, much smaller than this. Yes, there's no transmission, but this is a full cast iron big block, cast iron intake, cast iron heads, everything full of oil, all that stuff. Probably full of water too. So with that being said, the wheels are actually still kicked. If you know anything about twin I-beam, they pivot like this. And the, once they start to cross over that mark and they do this, you'll get camber. Now we don't have camber yet. We're still sitting downward. So I know I can cut a coil. I'm sure everybody just got pissed off whenever I said that, but y'all aren't gonna like the rest of this truck anyway. So I wanna cut a coil off the front of the truck. It's already sitting just a hair. It's actually sitting pretty level, but maybe at like an inch lower in the front. So I wanna bring the front down a little more once again, test fitting things, just kicking around ideas. So like I told y'all, these are Chevrolet car bolt pattern, five on four and three quarter, truck is five on five and a half. We know we're gonna be able to put a spacer in the back because look at how far tires tuck in. Up here, I just put this one up here and it is sitting flat against the bolting face, but if you can see the bolts are right here on the side of it, right there. So it's just sitting in here. I have a jack actually holding the truck, but it is flush up against it. And as of right now, it's pretty much exactly where it needs to sit. So with it being exactly where it needs to sit, an inch and a half wheel spacer to make that wheel fit on that truck is gonna push these tires out too far. And it's not going to look good. Crap. Another road bump. Speed bump. Issue. Last thing I wanted. Mm. Man, I just can't get the wheels and tires on this thing to work out for me. I just want it to look cool, man. All right, let me sleep on it. So right now, how you see the truck is it's sitting on a set of bias flies that I had sitting around and a set of white walls. The wheels and tires are just rollers I've had for different stuff. I actually put this set together because I knew they all matched. But the reason why I did is all four matched same size all the way around so I could get an overview of how the truck is going to sit. Now, right now, I just set the 390 back in here and the front clip is just sitting back on the truck. Just so that way I can get the front end to sit back down with the weight of an engine so I could see ballpark how it's going to look. I'm guessing roughly that engine with cast iron heads, cast iron block, full of oil, most likely full of water, how it sits right there, cast iron intake as well, how that engine right there sits should, should, I can't guarantee it, but I'm guessing the weight of that engine is going to be comparable to the engine and transmission we're going to be putting into this uh, vehicle. I'm 
I'll tell you now, if you want to keep up with it, you can keep up with it or not, whatever. I'm putting a TDI motor in it. I'm putting the motor out of my Jetta that I daily drive into this truck. So once I reach a certain point, the Jetta is going to come down and I'm not going to be able to drive it no more. And it, I'm going to rip all of its guts out of it and it's all going to go into this truck. I'm going to keep the... I'm gonna keep the seat that's in here and we're gonna keep this suspension for now, but the heart is gonna be the motor out of my Jetta. And the point is for me to make a really cool, great driver quality truck. I can drive back and forth to work. We still get great fuel mileage and all that stuff. I drive 30 miles one direction to work. So 60 miles a day, it's great. And a TDI motor, little diesel, little Volkswagen Jetta, it's great but I miss having a big truck, not even a big truck. I just miss having a, a classic car of driving. I was driving my station wagon for a while, but I don't want to just keep doing that to it. I'd rather this truck, it, I, the, the plan is I don't care how the outside looks, but I don't like the way it looks right now. So I'm going to make it look the way I want on the outside. I'm gonna make it have the engine and transmission I want inside of it. And we're gonna get the stance set how we want. But the whole thing is this is going to be a down and dirty budget build. And my plan is to show y'all, you can do it at home for not that much money. There, This truck is gonna look, I hate to say like a showroom quality because exterior is not gonna be, but everything else is. Interior is gonna look great bottom side of the truck you put it up on a lift all of that stuff's gonna look great the engine bay is gonna look great it just takes a little bit of elbow grease and time so i mean all you got to do is really put it into it and that's what i plan on showing y'all with this project is you can have a really cool outcome just take your time with it and it doesn't have to cost you an arm and a leg to build it 